Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30. By an act of faith, he turned his heel. I'm going to try and put this on here because this makes lots of noise. He turned his heel on Egypt, indifferent to the king's blind rage. He had his eyes on the one no eye can see and kept right on going, 28. By an act of faith, he kept the Passover feast and sprinkled Passover blood on each house so that the destroyer of the firstborn wouldn't touch them. 29, by an act of faith, Israel walked through the Red Sea on dry ground. The Egyptians tried it and what? Drowned. Verse 30, by faith, the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days, and the walls fell down. If you were reading it, then you already know what I'm going to preach on. By an act of faith. faith. Would you say that to yourself? By an act, By an act. Of, faith. of faith. Now, I want to take from those scriptures, even though I went to that particular chapter, I want to talk a little bit about Joshua. Because in the book of Joshua, you will find that Joshua was given an assignment that Moses was not allowed to fulfill. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I said Joshua was given an assignment that Moses was not allowed to fulfill. Now, the promise came to Abraham. When God said to Abraham that I will bless your children, there will be blessed going out and bless what? Coming in. Then God made another promise to Moses, and God promised Moses that the children of Israel will reach the promised land. Yes. Now understand something, Moses was simply the deliverer. God gave him the word, he gave the word to Aaron, Aaron spoke it in clarity, the people had to receive it. God promised Moses that the children of Israel would make it to the promised land. But God never promised Moses that he would make it. God told Moses, you will not see the promised land. So what you going to do? I'm going to send you who will. God sent him a man by the name of Joshua. Now we find here in our text in this reading, we see that Joshua, or General Joshua, if you will, uh, at the eve of the biggest battle of his life, in front of him stands a city of Jericho, a great big city, a wall that is so large. And, and its mighty walls weared up before him, reaching into the sky. Its fighting men guard the walls and the gates. In front of him stands the city of Jericho, guarding the eastern entrance to the promised land. There's the one thing that's stopping them from getting to the promised land, and it's called Jericho. I ask you a question today, saints of God, open door fellowship. What's stopping you from getting to your promised land? Hmm. What's stopping you from getting to your promised land? What is the promised land? The promised land is that thing God promised you. If God promised you he'd take you out of debt, what's stopping you from getting out of debt? If God promised you a husband, what's stopping you from getting your husband? If God promised you a wife, what's stopping you from getting your wife? I know the answer to you. Take your finger. Point it at yourself. Right. You are your own Jericho. Wow. Amen. Okay. So, so we find him facing his Jericho. Since the beginning of time, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, God has promised the land of Israel. However, to take possession of the land, its cities and peoples have to be conquered. You can't just walk in somewhere and say, God said it's mine. You look crazy. Okay. <laughs> there has to be something with it. God gives instructions. Yes, you can step out on faith and you can claim something, but before you claim it, you better be ready to take what you claim. Oh, yes. okay. that's a sermon by itself. We claim and stop and leave it there. <laughs> that's my new car. I claim it in Jesus' name. I'll be back to get it when I can afford it. But that's my new car. I claim it. If it's really yours, go get it. Wow. Some of you are waiting for God to tap you on the shoulder.
shoulder to give you that breakthrough. And God said, the breakthrough is already here. Why don't you just take it? Mm -hmm. My Lord. Whew, I'm going to get into my notes. i got to preach this. How do you take it, Pastor? Some of you are waiting for God to give you a fresh uh, touch or a new touch of the Holy Ghost. But you won't open your mouth and give him praise. It's there. You say, I'm going to get it, Lord. Today I'm getting the Holy Ghost. But you just sit. Mm. Wow. How can you get something if you won't take it? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about God. When he gives you something, he won't take it. See, and that's what's happened, Mom. God, is we got a whole lot of folks sitting here right now that, that God has given something to you. It's sitting right there. God says, you want it? Go get it. And you sitting up here looking and you wondering, oh my goodness, what's going on here? And, and, and as soon as you're getting ready to give up, God said, it's been sitting there the whole while. Some of us are wearing stuff that was not meant for you to wear. Oh my. You're carrying burdens that you were not meant to carry. Okay, okay. You're worrying and dwelling on things you don't have to worry about. And God's sitting there saying, when you're ready, I got the answer. Mm -hmm. wow. Am I preaching over there? Yes. Okay. Right. Let me get to my notes here. We, we cannot possess. I lost mother. Oh, I got her back. We cannot. Yes, I did. We cannot possess anything in Christ without first being in the right position. In the right. I preached a sermon years ago. It's your turn, but it's my time. And I took that from the woman with the issue of blood, who even though it was her turn, it wasn't her turn, Jesus was getting ready to go to Jairus' house because Jairus had got to Jesus first and said, would you just come and touch my daughter? And while Jesus was on his way, the woman with the issue of blood said, I know it's your turn, but it's my time. And interrupted Jesus on the way. And I want you to know the reason she got killed was because her faith was so great that she was willing to reach out even though it wasn't her turn, she said, but my God shall supply all my need. My God is so, so great, he makes the impossible possible. And I want you to know today, you might say, but it's not my turn. But if you really want that blessing from God, you might not go ahead and get it, because it is your time. That's right. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. So, so in order to be there, you must first be in the right position. See, and then when you are in the right position, when I have possession, I then have responsibility. Three words. Position. Possession. Responsibility. There can be no position without possession. And no possession without responsibility. Everybody wants something but don't want to take responsibility for what they have. Oh my. If I entrusted Brother Kelly, Brother Kelly, I'm going to give you think of something that would be good to you. I'm going to give you my truck. Now, Brother Kelly, no strings attached. You can have my truck and all that it is and isn't. Now, if Brother Kelly takes my truck, brings it home, puts it in his driveway, Brains to all his friends and family. I got a truck. Pastor gave it to me. But never drives a truck. Why aren't you driving it? I didn't put no gas in it. Mm. Why didn't you put no gas in it? Pastor didn't give me no money to put the gas in it. Listen, that wasn't part of the deal. I gave you the truck. It's now your responsibility. Oh my. Wow. That's good. All right. Let me go further. It might, it might hurt a little bit, but I'm going to preach it anyways. So God says to you, I'm giving you a responsibility of salvation. What do you mean a responsibility of salvation? I saved you. I saved you, which means I have confidence in you that you're worthy to be saved. Never look at it that way. I, I have so much confidence in you that you are worthy to be saved that all I ask you to do is be obedient to salvation. Uh-oh. Somebody say uh-oh. Uh-oh. 